Thank you, Colby and Adam. So, Frank, are you ready for this hot take segment? I'm ready, man. I'm are you very... sure? Hot yes. takes, quick, like I'm... a minute each. Yeah. Because you like to talk a lot. Yeah, I'm You're very like long-winded. a nice spice chicken wing. All right. So, anyway, first topic. Tony Romo, as you know, he's done, done football. Yep. Do you think he should have stayed, or do you think he's good where he is, like retiring and going to CBS Sports? All right, so in short, I don't think he should have stayed. I mean, he could have stayed, but at this point we've seen with football, like people are just retiring. It hurts. Football hurts. And oh, he can just go to the trust booth me, I know. in a nice air conditioning, get his millions of dollars the same way he would have with the Texans. And I think, he's, I think his career, for, for as much as we, as we malign him, his career, he doesn't have anything to prove. I, at least I, I disagree. I think he has a lot to prove, but I just think that his back is done. I think retirement is the right move health-wise because once your back goes, it's gone. Look at Tiger Woods. You know, J.J. Watt's in trouble. Yeah. Gronk might be in trouble. But as far as, you know, I think that's why it's a good move for him. But he has a lot more to prove. It's not just – I think he had a lot more – he at least get to a Super Bowl maybe. Yeah, I think it's, it's going to, this is what's going to happen with Tony Romo. 20 years from now, he's going to be great in the booth, and we're going to remember him as a much better quarterback than we do now because we're going to glorify uh, his eight full seasons, all the touchdowns. I don't know about threw. that. I think, I think it's going to be a glorified right now, so we're going to say he was pretty good, and he's not going to be anything too special. I, he's a Hall of Famer. I in mean, my look mind. at that face, though. So, you know, he's going to have a long career in television. Listen, look at that face. Yeah, that's a pretty face. So, it's better so than, it, might be better, it might be better than yours. Ago. It might be better than yours. It might be. It's, it's still, it still has something you to do. You got prove. the accent, though. All right. Yeah. So, next, March Madness. As, as you know, March Madness just ended. So, a lot of people are talking about with all the foul trouble that was going on in the, in the championship game, mm -hmm. do you think there should be any rule changes like four quarters or six fouls? Do you think anything like that should happen? Yeah, just no referees. You self-call your, your own fouls. Then we're going to have straight street ball. Yeah, the, the straight <laughs> street ball would be much funner than what we saw on Monday, was it? Yeah, At Monday. this point, I don't even remember because it was just so unforgettable. I mean, forgettable. I mean, it's. I think six fouls definitely. I think that. I think college basketball needs to be made as much as possible, like NBA. I think it'll help mm -hmm. scouts. I think it'll help college players get more acclimated faster. I think that four quarters, six fouls. That's what you should do. I to agree. Make two halves is. It's pointless. I don't see why you're doing it. You don't, don't do it in high school. Only place to do it is. is I actually don't mind the two basketball. halves. It feels kind of. It feels kind. It flows kind of better. It, for, like exactly. 20 minutes, you don't have as, as many stoppages, well, or at least it doesn't feel like as many stoppages. And you're still gonna have your TV timeouts though, so that's why I'm saying just throw an extra quarter. That way, the fouls don't add up as fast, and you're not. We're not having. I can go get a mm -hmm. popcorn or drink every five minutes because there's a yeah. foul. I agree with you with the six fouls. Five fouls is just that's childish. Let's just get yeah, them out so, of here. So, so long story short, make college basketball like the NBA. Pretty All much. right, next, Gino Oriema. So now, do you think that, so UConn lost, you know, mm -hmm. they were odds on favorite. Do you think that even with that loss, Gino Oriema is up there with the greatest coaches around, like the Belichicks, the Popovich, you know, all those great coaches? Sure. Yeah, I think he is. I mean, I think he should get fired, but I think he's one of the best coaches of all time. Why do you think he should get fired if you think he's one of the best I mean, he just lost in the coaches. Final Four. I mean, the, I'm sorry if he lost, you know, once, if he loses once every five years. I, I, mean, I thought the, that was a pretty good record. With the team he has, he definitely got out coached by the Mississippi so State So you think coach. Saban should be fired? Yeah, I think Saban should be fired Why if he doesn't Saban win every year. So if you, you think these are the best of the best, you can't fire a coach every time they lose if they're expected to win. That's what sports are about. Listen, if I had a smile like Tony Romo, I should be expected to become a CBS announcer. If you had the players that Gino Ariema does, you should be expected to win. All right, my th my, so do you, think he, do you think he's better than, do you think he's the best coach around right now with no, the dominance but, he's had? To answer your question seriously, I think he's one of the best coaches of all time. Yeah. I mean, what he's done, what do you think? people might jump to the conclusion he has better players, but I think this, his scheme, just his smarts, the yeah. way he controls, because he has a ton of them, a right. ton of good players, and the way he manages all the egos and everyone involved is all right, masterful. I, all right, let's cut it down. Do you think he's the best college coach around with your, you know, Rick Pitino's, Roy Williams, all those coaches? College, let's just That's say college because it's different than the NBA. So let's say best college coach. Do you know where I'm the best college coach, men's or women's? No. no. Coach K is. Coach K is? Yes. I disagree. I think, I think he's the best coach. I, mean, I think Dominus like that be. is. He might be, but for all I know, I don't have a clear measure to, 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 to answer that I know that it's hard question. to measure, yeah. but it's, it's a fun question. No, no, it's a fun question. I just think Coach K, I mean, I might be biased and people might call me uh, the opposite of a feminist, but just I, I like did, men's yeah, basketball whole, and, and Coach K, I love that's Duke a, that's as a topic, well. That's a topic for class next week in our general yeah. discussion. So next, now we got, let's go to the next level, men's mm -hmm. side, NBA. Do you think that the whole Westbrook versus Harden MVP race is the only thing keeping the NBA afloat this season? You think that everything no. else is just it's just soaking up all the fun out of NBA? Not at all, man. I think the NBA is in the best state it's been in years. Like right now, we really? have a talent influx. I mean, just think of how many players are having career years. How many teams are breaking scoring records, three-point records? That's just, that like, could just be bad defense. No, I think it's just better offense and just stats and science and just 
smart people just analyzing the game from a smart perspective and figuring I, it out. I mean, I, 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 I kind of agree with you. I think that the Westbrook Harden thing is good for the NBA just because it's somebody different than LeBron and your LeBron stuff. I think it's a nice switch up. So who do you have, Westbrook or Harden for MVP? Over the last two weeks, I think Westbrook. I mean, if you asked me a month ago, I didn't have Westbrook in my top four. Right now, I think he, he he's definitely the MVP. I'm gonna disagree with you, not because I'm a Rockets fan. I got I'll just put or that out there. because you're a Rockets fan. No, uh, last month I said Westbrook. I think I'm gonna go with Harden. You know why? why? Because two years ago, Harden lost the MVP because what, Steph Curry's team was the number one seed. Yeah. So I think seeding should matter in this in this situation as well. I agree. I just think the last two weeks, Westbrook, he's just kind of carrying that team all to himself and filled 45 points, eh, 57 I mean Harden, against I mean Harden Orlando. Plus Harden's thumping, though. Usage he's gets your stats up, too. All right, next topic. Patrick Ewing is the new coach of Georgetown. Mm -hmm. Do you think that he should have waited for his NBA chance, or do you think that it's a good move him going to the NCAA? No, nah, man. The light in front of you is the one that shines. If the Georgetown job is there for him, why is he going to keep slumming it? In he's been an assistant coach for like yeah. 15 years. Yeah, I that's mean. tough. I mean, I, I think... It's a tough gig. Georgetown's a tough gig. I'm, I'm from the, you know, DMV, mm -hmm. D.C., Maryland, Virginia area. Georgetown's a tough gig because they're not as big as they were once made to seem yeah. with AI and him. Those are the only two from Georgetown, you know, that are really great. I think it's a tough gig. I think it should wait for his NBA chance. I think college is different. I think he's he knows the game at a professional level better than college, and I think college yeah. would be a tough switch. But Georgetown might be the the like gateway drug that gets him to the NBA if he does a but good job. But that's going to be tough. Look at Avery Johnson. Avery Johnson was waiting for his chance. He decided to go down to college, and mm -hmm. he's stuck there. But no one was hiring him in the NBA. But why, though? He was a great coach, I thought. Yeah, he had a good season with the Mavericks, but then, I mean, just... It's, it's that's the business. You you're great. You're on top one I day guess, and the next one just think, people don't want I think, you. I think when you're in NBA when you're NBA coach, you're NBA coach. All right, so mm -hmm. Lexi Thompson, Lexi Tom Lexi Thompson's our last topic. You know, she moved the ball around during the golf match. She did. And a fan calls in and lets the emails in. E I'm sorry, you're right. Which is fan even funnier. emails in and lets people know and then she gets this four stroke penalty. Do you think that fans calling, emailing in should be able to affect an outcome of an event? Of an event. I mean, it's it's kind of a dangerous precedent that you said if you actually allow a fan to have that sort of input in a professional tournament. Definitely. But she cheated. Like like anyone that actually plays golf, yeah, it might I be mean, an inch, it might be a centimeter, it might be whatever you want to call it. She moved the ball. She I played mean, golf enough you have, times. If you have this in golf, well, who's to say that when? Why can't you change? Uh, outcomes after football and basketball games when they realize they blow calls. But if I email in it's with a, a fake claim, slope. no one's going to change anything. The dude emailed in, he was proved right, she moved the ball, and then she's paying just, for it. I just think it's tough. Like, I think that, just like referees, how they make bad calls, how they make yeah. bad decisions, I think that's the same situation. If you miss a call in golf, you miss a call in golf. I agree with you. It's a wrong precedent. I, 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 I mean, as a professional fan, I would kind of like to think of myself as someone that would email in. And, we all and do. Get, yeah. We all think we're but, professionals. Um, you wouldn't want. You don't want to give fans that leeway. But I feel exactly. like in this in this case, she might have just cheated. That's it. I, I mean, it ain't cheating. I guess it's not cheating. Till you got caught, and she got caught. But it's a slippery slope because in other sports, it it's it's such an annoying thing. Like now, it people is. are gonna be calling for that in football and basketball. Yeah. So, but imagine that's if all. you can call into the Super Bowl, like, hey, I saw a holding on number seventy-seven, and like three plays later, yeah, exactly. Right, you're getting a ten-yard penalty. But all right, I'm done with you. I'm out of breath. You I'm are? tired of talking to you. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I love talking to you, but you know, we gotta get to the next segment. Yeah, the producer's so. kind of telling us to wrap it, right? Right. We gotta wrap it. So, all right. coming up, we have more from Adam and Colby on this wonderful Sports Buzz edition. This has been great, Franco. It's been good. We'll see you guys next.